Okay. So uh, the first question is in Marathi, and then there are some questions in English. Yes. पहला जो प्रश्न है तो मनपा शाला एकोण साठ बोपोडित विद्यार्थ्यांनी विचारलाय खगोलशास्त्राचा शोध कसा लागला तर खगोलशास्त्र म्हणजे काय हा प्रश्न येतो तर आपण असं समजू आकाशातले जे तारे आणि ग्रह दिसतात त्यांच्या निरीक्षणातून खगोल विज्ञानाला सुरुवात झाली आता ते केव्हापासून मानव बघत आलाय सांगणं अवघड आहे परंतु आणखीन पुढं गेलं की आपण म्हणू शकतो की आकाशातले तार तारका तारे ग्रह वगैरे त्यांची माहिती मिळवायला आपल्याला आधुनिक विज्ञान लागतं तर त्या त्याचा उपयोग केव्हापासून व्हायला लागला असं म्हटलं तर आपण असं म्हणू शकतो साधारण दीडशे वर्ष झाली बर तेव्हापासून विज्ञानाचा फायदा खगोलशास्त्राला मिळाला असं हे थोडक्यात सांगता येईल साधारण गॅलिलिओनी टेलिस्कोपचा शोध लावला हा ही सुरुवात म्हणता येईल का कथा असा आहे की टेलिस्कोप गॅलिलिओने वापरायला सुरुवात केली तर त्या वेळेपासून एकंदर निरीक्षण करायची आपली शक्ती सुधारली परंतु असं म्हणता येणार नाही की त्याच्या पूर्वी काहीच नव्हतं उदाहरणार्थ आपण असं म्हणूया की न्यूटन गुरुत्वाकर्षणाचा नियम शोधला आणि तो ग्रहांना वगैरे वापरला त्याआधी ग्रहांच्या ज्या नोंदी होत्या टायकोपरा आहे केपलर वगैरे त्या टेलिस्कोप पूर्वीच्या होत्या तेव्हाही विज्ञान होत परंतु जरा लोक ही मध्ये होत ओके थँक्यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम रचना पंखवाला क्लास टेन स्टुडंट ऑफ सेंट हेलेना स्कूल इन पुणे शी आस्क हाऊ डू यू मेजर द डिस्टन्स टू अ स्टार इन आर ओन गॅलेक्सी दॅट इज बियॉन्ड द रेंज ऑफ द पॅरलॅक्स मेथड दॅट इज अ व्हेरी ट्रिकी क्वेश्चन अँड द्लॅड दॅट सम स्टुडंट थॉट ऑफ इट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल as she has said that uh, beyond the range of par- parallax method now parallax method was the earliest method used for dis- measuring distances that means you look at the star from two di- different vantage points so today and 6 months later if we look we see slight change in the direction mm. because we have moved Mm-hmm. and when we use that uh, ca- for calculation we can estimate the distance of the star that is what she started by saying beyond that right this parallax method does not work for very far away stars so how do you do deal with them so it's the method is not as good as parallax when you go to very far away Sir. so the next step is to look at the lum- luminosity of stars that is how bright they are so if you have two stars and one star is looking much brighter than the other the, the answer as to what these stars are like the answer could be to- two different ways mm-hmm. one could say that one star is more powerful than the other therefore that powerful star is Uh, shining better mm-hmm. but if you said that uh, no that is not the case the stars are of the same brightness but the fainter one is further away mm-hmm. so uh, you have a different uh, criterion for measuring distance so there are uh, techniques which are which i can't go into just now but which make use of the fact that the stars which are fainter looking are likely to be further out and to analyze them we need more spectroscopic and other information which is av- available now 
so that's a good point we can ask the students to maybe read up on spectroscopy and doppler effect and that may put them on the right track uh, the next question is very interesting it's asked by tayyab inamdar class 10 student of innovative international school uh, he asks why are planets round and not square or triangular in shape <laughs> Yes, you see, the point is all celestial bodies are bound together by force of gravity. So gravity force is such that it does not recognize a different directions. It's symmetric with respect to all directions. And therefore, whenever something is being considered uh, as formed by force of gravity, then that force of gravity will lead you. You may start by forming a star which is looking very spiky or various shapes and so on, but the gravity will readjust so that it will pull some things in, some things out, and until it becomes spherical. The only difference or only thing that seems to have been missed out in the question was that if these objects are spinning about an axis then the circular or spherical shape is slightly modified it becomes flattened at the poles mm. like the earth for example right. so this is all one can say in terms of forces okay thank you then Samavarta Satpathi from class 9th of Akshar International School in Pune asks, what generates the bright light coming from the center of the galaxy? Why is it so much brighter than other parts of the galaxy? Usually, the interpretation about uh, light coming from the galaxy is that it is made of, uh, galaxies are made of st uh, stars. Hmm. So, the stars emit light and you see the starlight and it is distributed across a galaxy. So this is the normal thing. Now what happens, and this is happening more and more nowadays, that there are people, people are finding galaxies whose center contains something like a black hole. That means a very powerful force of attraction. So when this source of attraction acts, uh, it pulls stars in, in the neighborhood to closer to it. So these stars which you which fall near the center, and uh, they are therefore con highly concentrated because the black hole is attracting a lot of them in a small volume. And they, therefore, light gets more bright because there are a lot of stars collected together. So it, it is like saying that um, there is a fair going on and there are a lot of uh, kids, but the kids gather together where there is some source of attraction. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you say that the center of star is most likely collect and having black holes which attract okay okay so uh, the next question comes from jivani who's a class 10 student of race concept school from karnataka she asks why is pluto not considered a planet mm -hmm. <laughs> well uh, the history for this is like this that over the last 10 10 20 years Astronomers have been discovering more and more uh, stars which have their own planetary systems. So you have a situation where in the earlier days, only the sun was known to be a star with its planetary systems. Mm. Now we see uh, as many as you can look for, you will see. So it is not kind of um, a rare phenomenon nowadays. So when this happened, begin to happen, they, um, the astronomers said we should make sure 
that when we talk of planets going around the star, we, we know exactly what we mean by planet. Mm. So uh, they laid down a, a committee met and the committee laid down the rules for which the uh, planets uh, uh, will follow. And if they follow the rules, then you are part of the system. That was the, the rule that they wanted to make. So uh, when they did that, they said, let us apply them first to our own planetary system. So then it turned out that only one planet of our sun's planetary system, one one planet is not, not quite satisfying the uh, rules. So they called that planet, which was Pluto, uh, as a dwarf planet, because it is too small. Right. Now, there is one criterion which one can apply, which is like this, that if you have a, uh, take, for example, the Earth. Earth is a planet. Now, Earth has moon as its uh, satellite. Hmm. Right? Now, there are other uh, solar system planets, which have their own satellites. Hmm. So now if you take the case of the Earth and the Moon, so they, they are going around each other. Now the Moon, uh, because it is fairly big, uh, tries to control the uh, effect, uh, control the Earth itself, as the, uh, of which it is a uh, satellite. Hmm. But the Earth is powerful enough to s suppress any such hmm. uh, kind, kind of, uh, uh, it, it's like going against the rules. <laughs> you know. So, so uh, the, the Moon is made to go around the Earth. Uh, of course, the Earth is also going around in a certain sense. But the center of gravity of the Earth and the Moon is inside the Earth. Okay, now you apply the same rule to planet Pluto. Pluto has a satellite, and they, they both go around each other, and that satellite also tries to control the motion of Pluto to some extent. So now the, how, it, how it does so, will depend on their common center of gravity. Mm -hmm. Just as we said for the planet uh, Earth. So you have these things going, but the uh, center of gravity does not lie inside Pluto, but it lies outside. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, Pluto is not all that powerful in controlling its planet, but it makes it satellite. Uh, so it makes its satellite uh, it tries to control, but the satellite is massive enough. So when this happens, it means that Pluto does not seem to have the full power uh, to qualify to, uh, for the membership of this club. <laughs> and therefore, it has been given this uh, su subsidiary status. Dwarf planet is the, the name given. So the next question, Hapan Prashna Manapa Shara Ekonsat Bopodit Nalai Surya Mala Kata Erzali Surya Mala Muktikani Kansi Kata Erzali. The Tata Karanata Alikadaz is some very likely. The Asur Taranche and Ek Prakarasta. And it at least just the Vastumana Chitarasta. Lower evolve water to the center for a further. And it's a duty to explode that. Explode the lake it at one, but it's a gas, gases will be a precursor. And it pressure high pressure, it's a tear. There's a prayer there, a pressure tear the love. Key that that's our theater. Kaitari Navin Ban, tear on a day. The Guru Tvakarshana Mula, the explosion, 
हे काय झालं तर सुपरनोवा तारा आणि तसे सुपरनोवाजवळ नवीन सुप सोलर सिस्टम निर्माण व्हायची शक्यता असते असं लोकांनी पाहिलंय आणि तशी तसा एक सुपरनोवा पूर्वी एक्सप्लोर झाला असणार त्यातून आपली प्रेशर वेव वगैरे जे आले त्या त्या प्रेशर वेवनी आपली एकंदर सुरुवात झाली गुरुत्वाकर्षणाचा फायदा घेऊन आणि त्यामुळं का तयार झाली म्हणून विचारलं तर त्याचं कारण तिथे एखादा सुपरनोवा एक्सप्लोर झाला आकाशगंगे तसे सुपरनोवा एक्सप्लोर होत असतात क्वचित प्रसंगी त्याचा संबंध आता याच्याशी जोडला जातो the next two questions are both related so maybe we can take them together shweta bhaykar and udita sutradhar from agartala both ask similar questions what would happen if the earth stops revolving around the sun and is it possible that the earth could leave its orbit well uh, the situation is like this imagine this is the sun and the earth is going around in a circle about the sun now why is it going around like this so the answer is that sun is attracting the satellite i mean the earth and in the earth as it goes around what happens to it is the following that it it is being held in that orbit because of two forces sun is pulling it towards itself and the second is it's going around in a circle so there is centrifugal force so these two forces balance each other and the as, as earth goes around now if you if if the earth decides uh, to have some bad advice and tells that, uh, that bad advice and why are you under the sun you you deserve to be on your own Uh, so become a free uh, object and that is what he is she is he or she is imagining that this is happening so if the earth says that i don't uh, want to go round so it stops going round then what happens is there is still the force of the sun the sun will pull it towards it and it will fall into the sun and get burnt out so it will too late it will realize it was given bad advice <laughs> so that is the thing that why what happens if it stops revolving around the sun and is it possible that earth could leave its orbit that is uh, the answer is uh, again to leave the orbit you need force to counter the earth's attraction so if you have can can produce a force like that then it will it, it can leave leave the orbit uh, for example you can imagine another star coming in so this is the sun and the star is coming and that star sees that there are these planets and uh, also it sees that there are some planets which are not being given important position in the solar system so they want to quit as all the pol- politicians do they are not being re- respected in there so uh, this uh, star, uh, what you call would the earth leave the orbit uh, is it possible so this that star which is coming will pull if it has enough uh, kind of strength it will pull the thing will the earth and the earth will then go around the other star and that star keeps going down so this is how the uh, politicians in stars and they they they, they behave <laughs> they would behave uh, according to the law of gravitation okay So the the next question is from Janvi Rothe, a class nine student of Sardar Dastur High School in Pune. It's a macabre question. Would a dead body decay in space? 
well, uh, so, so far that situation hasn't come. <laughs> but I would say that uh, be, since in uh, space outside, density is so low, you don't expect any uh, anything special uh, over there. So if a body go, goes, that body will keep revolving. But there is no nothing kind of process going on. Bacteria. Uh, to, which will call, cause decay. So I don't think at the moment we have in that state. <laughs> OK. So then we come to a set of questions that are uh, interesting and advanced. Harsh Jagta uh, from Prodigy Public School in Pune and Purva Habib from DEA School ask, what is dark matter and how can we detect dark matter? Yeah. Uh, over the last 20, 30 years, astronomers have been detecting uh, amounts of matter which are not visible in the same way as stars and galaxies are visible. But how do we know that it's there? It's because it exerts gravitational force on whatever comes near it. So that has been the main source of observing dark matter. When you could say, how, how do you say, what do you mean by dark matter if you if you can see it. So we can't see it, but we know it exists because of its gravitational attraction. So and the earlier results were mainly about uh, our own galaxy and nearby galaxy. So uh, what happened, uh, people were looking at uh, how matter is moving inside our galaxy. Mm. And they found that the way they, they were mo moving uh, showed that this center of the gravity is, of course, in the middle. Uh, if you go further and further away, the effect of gravity should decline. Mm. But as you go very far, they found that this doesn't decline, but it remains flat. Mm. So even if they are further out, uh, the attraction is there. So this. Uh, seem to go against the law of gravitation. Mm. So what they said was the following, that uh, law of gravitation is OK, but why this is flattening is because there is other matter present mm. which keeps attracting. And that is, therefore, uh, the reason for uh, having dark, dark matter. But dark matter is attracting. The other, on a larger scale, you had uh, clusters of galaxies which keep moving around each other. And theory tells us that the uh, kinetic energy, that the energy of motion and potential energy, which is gravitational attraction, the force of that, they should balance out mm. in a cluster. Now, such a balance is expected, but when people began to see how many galaxies are producing, how much attraction, how much. They found that there was not enough number of galaxies, galaxies in a cluster to produce that kind of uh, attraction. Mm -hmm. So if it was not there, what is there? Or again, is law of gravitation wrong? Mm -hmm. uh, that is why we are getting this uh, contradiction. The answer is, the law of gravitation is OK, but there is dark matter which is producing extra force and providing mo more kinetic energy, which you can't see visibly in terms of galaxies moving around. So that is how dark matter is being seen. People still don't know how it was created and what its nature is like. I know it is dark, but I don't know what it is made of. OK. The next question is from Aditya Patil and Prathamesh Kadam from Millennium National School. They ask, what is time and does gravity affect time? 
Well, I think the first question, what is time? Nobody knows the answer. So I can say it is a measure of uh, how things are happening at what rate. And you can say something uh, in, in a kind of hand waving way without giving any mathematically satisfactory or physically satisfactory reason. Definition. So we don't know what time is. Uh, I remember uh, in 1963, uh, when I was a, a just a student getting PhD, I was invited to, to take part in a, a conference in Cornell University, which was attended by about 20 people. They were all very bright scientists, some Nobel laureates and so on. So I was very uh, honored that I was in, invited as part of that gathering. Now, th those people, uh, and I much shared my own, what you call ignorance with them, uh, they deal dealt with that same time, same question, what is time? And they did not agree on any unique answer. And they said, uh, uh, we, we should keep meeting once in a while to find the answer. Well, I said 1963, and now we are in 2020. But no answer has yet been given. And people have to think about it. And then the second question, part of this question was, does gravity affect time? Does gravity affect time? Yeah, that one can give a better proof. Uh, there is example of stars, white dwarf stars that are highly compressed. So they have very strong gravity near their surface. So if you look at the spectrum of those stars, the the wavelength of light that is coming out, that wavelength is, appears to be different from what is you see normally around us. Mm. So this is happening because the stars, white dwarf stars, have got very strong gravitational field. So it tells us very clearly that gravity does affect time. It makes it go slow. That is, the clock will go slow compared to the real thing. I, I should tell you perhaps here a story from our uh, mythology. You see, uh, there was uh, a king, uh, his name was Kukudmi, and he had a daughter who was very beautiful. And he wanted somebody really uh, equal to her in uh, to, to marry her. So he was here. He was receiving a lot of kind of uh, requests to, to to marry the daughter. Revati was the name of the daughter. So he said, "I can't answer who is good, who is bad. Let me take them to Brahma." So he took took that uh, girl to Brahma. When they reached there, Brahma and wanted to meet Brahma, Brahma sent word, wait a minute, I'm coming, uh, but I'm completing some work here. So he waited and uh, Brahma came out and said, uh, what is your problem? So he explained. So Brahma laughed and he said, look, while you spent here a few minutes, and so many thousand years have elapsed on the earth. So all those people whom you were looking for, who is the good one, they're all gone and dead and gone. But if, as, since you've come here, when you go back, again, different people will be there. So you marry Balram, who was Krishna's brother. I see. He is equal to you and good. So he went, he did, uh, married Balra. Now this is an example where the clock was going slow near um, the Brahma. Right. So we had some sort of imagination, imagination to think of this. 
So the, the next question then is, the next two questions actually are along similar themes. Aditya Rajhaus uh, from SNBP International School asks, is time travel possible and how could it be achieved? Well, time travel means you can go into the past or into the future. The answer to that question is that you scientists so far know a method of going into future, but not a method of going into the past. Going into the future means you go very fast in a spaceship. And when you come back, you will find that uh, you may not have aged much, but the rest of the world has gone ahead. So it may happen that the rest of the world is 20 years ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So in that way, you have reached a, a future mm. by going very fast. But you can't do that to the past. And that is logically also necessary because the people give this example that supposing you go back into the past and you find the gentleman who was, who was your grandfather. And I'm not suggesting you do it, <laughs> but you kill your grandfather. What will happen is when you come out to the come back to the present, uh, you discover that there was grandfather who died very early. Somebody killed him. But then the question was, how are you in existence? If your grandfather is no longer, then your father can't be born. Right. You can't be born. So there is a contradiction in the uh, whole argument, which is why time going into the past is not possible. You can go into future, no such as contradiction will come. The next question is from Chinmay Rasar, class 10th of New English School, Ramon Bag. He asks, why does gravity bend light? Well, this was a question which Newton had asked when he was making his law of gravitation. And he had called it universal gravitation, law of universal. That means any two pieces of matter will attract each other by gravity. So that was his uh, argument. Then he was asked and he himself asked a question to himself. Uh, what, uh, what about light? Mm. Is light part of this effect of gravity? If it is, so imagine light is going like this and you have got a strong body here attracting others. So this light will bend down in the direction of that attractor. So the question Newton asked was, will it go on straight without bending or will it bend near a massive object? And he was a very honest person, Newton. If he knew the answer, he will give it. If he did not know, he will say, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer. Because some scientists feel they must always have an answer to everything. It may be answer is there, but they, it may not be ready yet to know the answer. So this happened. And only by the time Einstein came on the scene, the same question was asked by Einstein. And Einstein's theory of gravity very clearly showed that light gets bent by gravity. So it is this uh, what Newton could not confirm Einstein managed to do. Shardul Darekar, also from SNBP International School, asks, does space have a boundary or, or a beginning? Well, again, we don't know the answer. Uh, and I, I am not uh, sort of I can't say I know the answer, but I can't tell you. It's not like that. I don't know the answer. And nobody knows yet how space time exists uh, in the past and how it will behave in the future. 
Okay, so we have a last question, and this is a nice sort of uh, interesting question to end on. Yashvin Nafis from Shepherd's Path International School, New Delhi, asks, "What is a parallel universe?" <laughs> Again, this is something which people talk about, but uh, I am personally not uh, in favor of the idea. The idea says that there are several universes. you are living in one universe there is another universe in which some somebody else is living this is now you can make such a statement and say there are universes where the people exist and then when you are asked uh, what is the proof of your statement can, can i talk to somebody in the other universe then if he, he will come and tell you that no these other universes are isolated they are not uh, telling you uh, any connection so then you are, are being asked to believe in something which scientifically you cannot prove right. so i feel that the idea of parallel universe may be interesting for some reason or other but it may not be realistic <laughs> so so thank you very much professor narlikar for your time um there are a lot of questions that students ask us and and it's really fun to that we got a chance to hear you uh, answer some of them so thank you very much thank you